Greetings, and welcome to the Kaid May Online Court Live Pre-Show. Guests scheduled to appear are their excellences of Wintermist, Altavia, and Calafia. And Master Giles, Mr. Giuseppe, Mistress Meliora, and a special guest performance. Me, I'm your announcer, Master Bjorn of the Northern Sea. And here's your host, Master Laertes McBride. I'm not sure if they can hear us because you've been muted for the last... Gosh, I have been muted this whole time. That is fantastic. Yes, which, by the way, from what I've been reading in the comments has been some of your most popular work the entire quarantine. This is probably the best show ever. So we're going to do a very quick uh, very quick recap that uh, this is about <laughs> the virtual Petrero War. Uh, June events, along with Great Western War, has been uh, canceled and or postponed. And uh, I was introducing you. So this is fantastic. I'm glad we had. You know what? Good thing this is rehearsal and we're not live right now. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things I want to, oh, nice. One of the things I want to talk about before we get started is uh, as for people that watch live from Kaid on a regular basis, we like to highlight Bardic performances. And as we've said before, if there's people out there who would like to share your skills, whether it's a song or dance or storytelling, please let us know. Since it looks like this is going to be going on for a bit, I'd love to be able to highlight uh, the local performers or if there's someone from out of kingdom, you're certainly welcome to come on the show too. Uh, you can either send us direct messages on Facebook or drop us an email at our official email account, which is on the screen right now. It's very important to remember that uh, there, there's a lot of arts that that we can enjoy and look at and see a lot of the static arts, but performance arts to truly be appreciated, um, it's it's nice to to hear them to see them and uh, for those people we have so many talented people in Kaid and in the SCA in general um, being able to share those things at this time when we're all needing a little extra SCA in our lives perhaps this would be a wonderful time for those people to to uh, show us some of the the things that they've learned some of their skills we'd really appreciate that and I just want to comment about your amazing coronet. It's Thank you. This is a gift from my fiance, and uh, and it unfortunately makes me like six foot ten, which means speaking of Petrero, every time I go to Petrero wearing this coronet, I bring at least some of a tree home with me. Oh, understandable. Yeah. Well, at least we're branching out. Um, so, uh, who are our, our special co-hosts for our show tonight? We are very fortunate to have with us. Um, Master Giles and Master Giuseppe, the uh, former barons of uh, Gildenholt, uh, the first same-sex territorial barons um, of the society, and they will be with us for what I can only assume will be amazing color commentary and a discussion about uh, baronial seats and, and uh, the work going into them. Since we have so many uh, baronial or territorial things happening, um, in Kaid over the next several months. Um, it will be really good to get their take on things. All right, well, let's bring them in. They've been coming in right about now. So let's go to where we can all see each other. Oh, it, it's like Hollywood Squares. Hello, Your Excellencies. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. And there, you know, there you go. Hi. Now you're not muted anymore. Hi. I, I, I need to Thank you very much. The thought of me being muted is just unbearable. <laughs> True. So uh, how are how are your excellencies doing today? <laughs> doing particularly well. Um, I gotta say this is probably the cleanest I've ever felt for any Petrero war. So um, I'm I'm loving it. I'm feeling perfectly comfortable and, and not too overdone by the heat. <laughs> And Master Giles? Well, I share Messer Giuseppe's perceptions about the amount of comfort and cleanliness that we are enjoying at this particular moment. Having been going to Portrero, well, not having been to Portrero for a long time and having gone for an even longer time before that, I definitely appreciate not feeling gritty and dusty. <laughs> so how have y'all been uh, doing in these uh, challenging times we've had for the past few months? How have you been spending your time? 
Well, Giuseppe has been amazingly productive. He has created an extensive list of things for me to work on. <laughs> it's true. And I should point out, he himself has been productive. The coronet that he is wearing, he just got back from the jewelers having it plated. He constructed it himself. It's all cut work. It is set with enamels mm -hmm. bearing the arms of the baronies that he has held from the crown and the laurel and pelican. It's set with several different gems. And uh, he did an astonishing job on it. It's a really remarkable piece of work. And I should wear it better. <laughs> Now that's that's pretty amazing. Wow. So uh, as you as you mentioned, um, and, and as uh, Bjorn was talking about, uh, you guys have set the Bronial throne at, at, at Gildenhold, along with uh, Giuseppe. You actually were a landed baron prior to that, which of course means you're a slow learner. But um, how, how was your experience as Baron of Gildenhold? Um. I would have to say it, it really was one of the most fantastic experiences I've ever had in the SCA. Um, they, uh, the, the, the first time I was landed Oval had challenges. We'll just put it that way. And um, it's it really is one of the hardest jobs in the SCA, unquestionably, because you're you're doing the work, you're doing it for an extended amount of time. I mean, as you know, the the course of years and Unlike the royalty that it has to do it for six months and gets tons and tons of help from enthusiastic people at the baronial level, it's not usually that way. Said that, um, for us, I think it was really unique. We had, it, it was just the right combination of everything. We had um, a new opportunity in that they were allowing same gender and we had so many people that didn't wanna just see it work, but see it work magnificently that it just felt like everybody stepped up. It was one really big happy family that got together, put a ton of work into doing the things that we did. Um, we're uh, had enough blind faith, I'd say, to, to go ahead with every silly project we came up with when we said, hey, wouldn't it be great if, you know, dot, 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 we did a ton of work to do this thing and uh, people stepped up and did it. It really was magnificent. And I would say that really came down to the people in the barony is it's, it's all about the people. It really is. I would essentially agree with that. We had a number of projects that we started and we're fortunate enough to see almost all of them come to fruition. Uh, the barony made Gonfalon banner stands for every other barony in the kingdom, along with two, uh, banners of the barony's arms. Uh, that was a remarkable amount of work and I was very impressed with the way people got on board and adopted the project as their own. Um, a couple of our other projects were the creation of a, a painted ground cloth mm. for the baronial pavilion that has the arms of all the former landed barons and baronesses, uh, the people who were patrons, people who contributed financially to making the project work. And then there's a large central panel that has a scene from a Guild of Hold event painted on it. I don't think I've seen anything like that anywhere else in the SCA, and I think it's a remarkable accomplishment. That, that, that's incredible. Now, uh, being barons and first ones, did you feel there was extra eyes on you or extra pressure <laughs> uh, than you normally would in the situation? Oh, heck yeah, there were. Um, I think from day one, because we had people from um, several different kingdoms that came down for the investiture. And uh, it, it really, there was no escaping the fact that it was a big experiment. Um, and even the fact that it never, contrary to popular belief, Corpora never prohibited it. It just kind of looked like it because there was something that happened in the 80s with the founding of the barony, but there was nothing ever that said same gender couldn't be. It didn't change the fact that when the names came forward, it it made waves and it went all the way to the board level to the point where the board um, like formally endorsed it, um, which is not something they needed to do, but you know, I guess they decided they needed to do it. So yeah, it was like, it was pressure before day one. Unquestionably, we we definitely felt like we needed to do a good job. We needed to make it so that the barony really shined because if we didn't, 
it would be very, very easy for anybody who was just looking for an excuse to be critical to say, see, same gender doesn't work. So um, we put a lot of work, a lot of work into really trying to make everything work, but also putting it in perspective. It didn't matter what anyone else said. It didn't matter what the rest of the kingdom said, we, uh, the rest of the other kingdoms said. It didn't matter what any other group said. It came down to what the people of Guildenhold said and wanted and desired and wanted to see going forward. We, we really put our sights into that. And that really was an, uh, a winning recipe. Um, it made it so that the whole group thrived. It made it so people were enjoying themselves. People felt included. And at the same time, um, you know, just, gee, happened to uh, satisfy any concerns that people had. And it seems like the biggest, uh, the, of the few complaints that we heard, it seemed like they were further and further and further away from California. And with people that had never met us, never seen anything in Gilded Hall, always heard things third, fourth, fifth, sixth hand, and by the time we heard about it, it's like, oh, we can trace this back to what it originally was before. Someone's really stretching it to try and come up with a problem. I think one of the things that most gratified me for that experience was the number of people, both inside in Kaid and from outside, who volunteered to come and be our champions if we got any grief or oh, yeah. stress from anyone. And we never had to call on any of them. There, there was simply no no issue with, with it, and that, that made me very happy. Well, that's awesome. Hey, hey Bjorn, this is usually where you step in with some questions. You have something you want to talk to your excellency about? Well, yes. Um, one of the things I, I wanted to ask was, um, given that you are both um, people who have spent a great deal of time serving the society, uh, being both pelicans, but you've also spent a great deal of time serving through arts, what do you think <laughs> as territorial uh, seat, vassals for the crown, what what was it being Pelicans or, or, or in a service track that most prepared you for the much more arduous uh, position of territorial seat? Since, as you have said, it's not just like crown, we were there six months or, or nine months or however long this one's gonna be happening. Um, but over a span of several years, what did you, what, what prepared you being, being servants to the society to, to best handle the position? Well, I would say honestly, and this sounds almost a little silly, um, I spent quite a bit of time um, in the past being a newcomers officer. Um, I was a newcomers officer locally and uh, kingdom deputy in my previous kingdom. And uh, when I came here, I was Guildenhall um, newcomers officer. And one of the things that really taught me that, that that whole experience taught me is that the person coming in brand new today um, may today be a nobody. No one knows who they are. Nobody knows what they're going to do or anything. But that's just the point. This person may very well be a future pelican, a future kingdom officer, a future royal, um, a future landed noble. Everybody has that potential. And you really have two choices. You can either stomp on that person right from the beginning, which is only going to accomplish driving them off, and that serves nobody any good. Or you can try your best to find what their interest is. You know, it doesn't matter how raw or rough it is, it could be a diamond in the rough. And push them in that direction, encourage them in that direction. So if that means someone comes in and they really don't care about any of the history stuff or the research stuff, but they just, their eyes glaze over and, and they just look in wonderment at a fighter practice, you know, encourage them to talk to the marshal, introduce them to some of the fighters, you know, get them going on their path. Um, someone else who seems like a wallflower, you know, you can bring them in to a discussion. You can ask them, oh, you know, would you, would you mind walking with me while I go and do such and such? You can pull them in and all of a sudden they're a part of the thing. And then the next time you turn around, they're right there saying, I want you to know that I'm here if you need anything. And, you know, boom, that, that's bringing someone in on the service side. And if you see someone quietly working on something in the corner, get up and go see what they're doing. You know, don't interrupt, but just say, hey, I see you're working on something. You know, what are you working on? Tell me about it. I'm interested. Um, the whole point is to really show people attention and sincere interest in what they're doing and steer them in that direction. Um, 
steer them towards people that know more about it, steer them towards the local um, uh, meetings and gatherings that uh, nurture that kind of a thing. That's really what it comes down to. I, it's almost like, uh, I guess we're baronial matchmakers in a, in a few ways, but you're just really trying to push that person in, in where they're interested in because that's going to further them and that's going to make this, the group stronger. No question about it. I don't know that I can really add anything significant to Giuseppe's list of, of challenges that face landed nobility. Um, I think the thing for which I was least prepared was the fact that from the very moment that you arrive at an event to the moment you drive away, you are on. And I'm sure that it's more intense for monarchs, but it's intense for a shorter period of time. The landed barons and baronesses face it for years at a time. And it, it took me a while to, to get to the point that I was prepared for that um, before we got to an event. Yeah, yeah. Uh, without a question, there's there's many times where someone's really trying to talk to you about that thing that that thing is so important and i'm literally in the parking lot putting on my tights at the time and trying to drop every hint that you know i'm a little busy right now can you give me just this many just this many but you know it's also easy to shut that person down and make them think you know they got yelled at and they'll never come back so you have to do it carefully yeah we well, I was going to say we've had that shared experience of a, being a landed baronage, and you're exactly right. From the moment you show up to the moment you leave, you your time and your attention belongs to everyone else, and it's a it's a matter of of, of accomplishing everything that needs to be done, along with giving the attention that the people that are coming up to you need and deserve. So yeah, it's a challenge. Well, I truly enjoyed the the, uh, the answer, and having worked with uh, both you, Laertes, and Altavia, and uh, also with the both of you here, and we knew each other uh, when you were a landed baron before, but it, we didn't because I was in Meridias and you were in Trimers. We didn't really interact very often, except for at like a Gulf Wars. But having seen all of you walk that line between being accessible but still being true to your own personal needs, I think you all did an amazing job. And uh, it certainly is a heck of a thing to have to do and do for several years at a time. So I want to thank you all for doing so. So one of the last things I want to hit before we go, because uh, we do need to move on, because we do have an actual uh, end time for this show, because uh, we don't want to be late for, for court at four, is I know that me, and unfortunately people around me at court, and you guys tend to enjoy doing color commentary during court. Um, Right? I mean, that's that's the fun part. But uh, unfortunately, it means I have to use with the at the end of, at the back of court because otherwise people give me dirty looks. But um, I I know I'm not. I, you know, it's 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 part of the theater. It, it's not being disrespectful. It's just part of a, a, a adding to the ambiance is the way I look at it. And I, I, right? I mean, that's what we're here. Absolutely. I mean, might as well address it head on because I get I get dirty looks all the time. Yeah, um, all about ambiance. <laughs> well, y'all look fabulous, by the way. So, um, my favorite note, and then I'll let you go, is that uh, someone um, someone says the video is blurry, but it looks like Giles has money signs necklace. Oh, that's like a <laughs> And I think that's fantastic. I think you should get one like that. So, uh, I have no response to that. That is that is uh, chain, baby. this chain. Uh, I, this chain is a replica of those worn by the. Oh, and it looks like we've lost them. Well, do, do you want to know about the chain? Well, yeah, I think your signal's kind of degrading. That's a replica. We'll go with that. So I, I don't want to yank your chain anyway. So. We lost the um, No. So um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we'll see you over in court, and y'all have a great day. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you both. That was great. That was fantastic. Um, what, what great gentlemen that we have here in this society. Absolutely. We're very lucky for the work that they've done. Um, speaking of barren and baronesses, we do have 
messages from their excellencies um, that uh, for anniversaries that we were unable to attend in person. So uh, first up, let's hear from the, their excellencies of Winter Mist with a slight message. Sky. And Winter Mist. I am Baron Einar Rabatha. And I am Baroness Sunifa Jan's daughter. To our Wintermiss family, we would like to congratulate the recipients of baronial awards that will be handed out today during Royal Court. We can't mention the names as it is a secret. These are extraordinary times that we're living in, but things will get better and we will see each other again in better times. Please stay safe, be well, and take care. We miss you all. We miss Very you much. All. Thank you. And Thank have you. A great and have day. a great day. That was very nice to hear from their excellencies. Yeah, of, of our, of our, our most recent barony. So. Mm -hmm. And considering it's winter mist, it actually seemed quite uh, summery up there. I have to say. <laughs> I think it gets a bit warm starting this time of year. Uh, moving on, uh, Altavia anniversary. They had to do the Altavia Altiversary, but uh, their excellencies would like to have a uh, a brief just you know, shout out to the populace of the kingdom. Let's bring them on, and uh, let's see what they have to say. Hello, everyone. It's so great to see you. Hi, buddy. <laughs> yeah. uh, we hope that everybody's having a great time with a virtual virtual portrayal. And uh, congratulations to everybody in Califia that helped pull that together. It's been a great time. And we hope that those of you that were able to attend our virtual campfire last night had a great time there as well. Uh, we just wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone that's been working so hard for the Barony and the Kingdom this year, um, for all of our events, for anniversary last May, for our Agincourt uh, Archery and Throne Weapons Tournament in October and uh, Agincourt Feast that evening and um, everyone that helped out uh, just a couple of weeks ago with our Altiversary event. Uh, speaking of that, we wanted to give a shout out, especially to uh, Meliora and Laertes for helping us run tech on that. For everyone who ran events during the day, uh, including our marshals, uh, Cecil, Colwyn, and Griffith, who came up with uh, the card game, uh, helped out with uh, Colwyn and uh, Cecil. And uh, many thanks to all of our out of Barony friends and everybody in the Barony that helped uh, attend the meetings and helped out. Um, Want to thank uh, Philippe for all of his advice from the Dunor event, uh, for Lady Brig for being a big cheerleader for the event, and for Master Owen for all his lovely color commentary during the fighting. It really added a lot to the event. Um, we also want to thank everybody that's been coming out and having fun with our Zoom meetings. I'm glad that um, people are enjoying that, and it's giving us a way to connect with everyone uh, at least once a week. Uh, we, if you're not aware, we do it on Monday evenings uh, right after live from Kaid. Uh, the information is posted on the Kingdom uh, Facebook group, and everyone is more than welcome to come out. And I uh, want to finish off with thanking all of our officers and all of our court and guard for uh, all of their hard work and for making us look so great. And I think I'll turn it over to Nico now for his comments. Yes, this is definitely a day of thank you. <laughs> Everybody, I thank you all so much. Everybody has done such a great job and helped out so much in every area. Um, I personally would like to thank, and also the Baroness would like to thank all of the people that have shown their generosity during this, this really tough time, um, making masks, for um, those uh, um, essential uh, people in the hospitals as well as um, other jobs. Um, bringing food, uh, shopping for people that can't get out or is that are it, too dangerous for them to, to get out or just stopping by people's houses to say hi. That is, I mean, it was such a delight to see people doing that. That is, it's wonderful, it's great. And the generosity that Altavia, Altavians and as well as people in the kingdom uh, it's, it's it's overwhelming. I mean, there is no other place other than the SCA that shows this much generosity. It's just wonderful. <laughs> it's just great. Thank you so much. Um, as uh, the Baroness was saying, uh, we had our Alt 
Altavia, Altavia alt anniversary uh, last week or two weeks ago. And um, I wanted to congratulate the champions. We have our arts and sciences champion who is actually going to be our champion for the rest of the year. And that is uh, the Honorable Lady Diana. And she had a wonderful Elizabethan middle class dress that was just, it was gorgeous. But all of the arts and sciences um, entries were just, they were just wonderful, great craftsmanship, craftspersonship. <laughs> um, very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful entries. Thank you so much for all of that. Um, we also want to congratulate all the, the wonderful people that got baronial awards. Um, you, they are very well deserved and we wish we could give them to you in person and we will eventually. <laughs> but you guys deserve them so much. We wanted to to show you how much that uh, you are appreciated. Um, and also congratulations to all the people that are going to get awards from um, from the kingdom this uh, um, this wonderful evening. And um, I know some Altavians that are way deserving of these awards and the letters have come in to us and we've wrote, written letters and there's going to be plenty. <laughs> and, and, and thank you so much for being who you guys are and you guys are going to get some very well-deserved um, awards. Um, and a last thank you to everybody, uh, all the Altavians and, and people out of Kingdom. The hard work you have done in the last year and the last couple of years um, have made this a splendid, splendid barony. And <laughs> it's so much fun to be here with you all and uh, to celebrate just everything, to celebrate life. And um, thank you all for being here. Uh, we do appreciate it. And um, I hope we have, uh, everybody has a lovely court and um, just stay well. Thank you very much. We love you. We miss you. And Altavia, whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the close of Virtual Patrol War. Uh, the first ever virtual war. Um, yes, an, an amazing event um, that was created very quickly. Uh, yeah, I, I had no idea that we could do all this online and that we could pull it together so fast. Um, Rapier classes online, Pell uh, heavy classes online, um, a full gambit of, of youth classes put together um, all in the span of a couple of weeks. Uh, we are incredibly impressed and, and blessed to have the team that we have. I hope that you were able to go through uh, as many classes as you could and enjoyed hanging out with everybody on virtual uh, Potrero Zoom classes and things like that. I, I want to say thank you to everyone that put together a presentation and a class um, to make this event happen. Yeah, um, just an amazing event. Um, we hope it's the only one of its kind, but if you can't have war, this is the next best thing. So, uh, yeah, coffee with the Baron in the mornings was uh, was fun. I appreciate everybody that showed up and said hello. There was a lot of people in there that we hadn't seen in a very long time. Um, the one thing about Zoom is you can dial in from anywhere. Uh, so that was really terrific. Um, some of the evening events. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was said. nice strolling from <laughs> camp to camp. So, so uh, we're really glad that everybody had a great time. Um, we look forward to the day when we can see you all soon. Yes. Miss you all. Miss you all. See you at court. You know, I, I got to learn how to use that mute button better. So anyway, as you saw at the end, we had a message there from the Baron and Baroness of Calafia, who you'll be seeing shortly here in the wonderful world of online court in about half an hour. So Bjorn, who do we have for a special live guest as a performance? We are very fortunate to have uh, Duke Guillaume de Belgique, who will be performing a Shakespearean piece for us. And um, I'm not going to give any more away. I would rather he uh, do that. I've had the fortune of uh, seeing him perform on uh, several occasions. And um, he is uh, 
really uh, an excellent test bin, and I'm very pleased that we're getting a chance to see this. Also, being that he he is a former territorial baron of Calafia himself, he had a great deal to do with uh, with Petreros in times past, and so it's a, a wonderful thing to have him with us again uh, for today. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing it. All righty, well, Bob Bjorn, I will make you go away from the screen, and we'll bring in Duke Hume. Uh, yes, yeah, so, you know, we're celebrating Petraro Award, and um, what an awesome opportunity to have this talented Duke perform with us. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is. Hello, Your Grace. Hey, Laertes, Your Excellency, how are you doing today? It's, it's great. It's, it's so good to see you. It's been much too long. It has, it has. So, uh, as we were saying, this is, a, this is Petraro Award weekend, and we like to, for these pre shows, like we've done this a lot, we did one other time. I like to have some type of inspirational segments for the people to listen to. And I, I thought it'd be fantastic for you to come and perform a piece for us. Well, what piece are you gonna to perform today? So I thought uh, in the inspirational uh, uh, spirit, I would uh, give you the St. Crispin's Day speech from Shakespeare's Henry V. Yeah, fantastic. Well, let me uh, turn the stage over to you. And if you'd like to take over, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Duke Young. Uh, so uh, to set the stage here, um, this play obviously is about uh, the King Henry V, the king uh, who fought and won at the Battle of Agincourt. Um, in Shakespeare's play, uh, he describes uh, very vividly uh, the campaign of Henry V into France, uh, starting from the siege of Harfleur uh, and continuing on through his campaign across France towards Agincourt. Um, it was a rather desperate battle for the English. Uh, they had been in France for uh, many months, um, uh, trying to make their way home after a protracted siege of the city of Harfleur, a hard fought battle uh, where they lost many soldiers, had to leave a big part of their army behind. Uh, and they were marching across France, trying to outmaneuver the French army. Uh, the French trying to defend their territory were collecting uh, soldiers and warriors to their cause. And every day that went by, the French got stronger and stronger. Uh, Henry knew that time was not on his side. Um, and uh, as, they, uh, uh, as they made their way towards Calais uh, and the safety of a port uh, to get home, um, they, uh, they came across the, the hill and realized that they were facing the full might of the French army that had that had outflanked them and gotten ahead of them and were now barring their way uh, towards the only ports to get home. The English army was tired and hungry and sick. Uh, and as they, uh, as they spent the night knowing that the next morning there would be a battle there at, at the field near the town of Agincourt, uh, they could, Shakespeare says they could literally hear conversations in the enemy camp, uh, the enemy horses uh, neighing, uh, almost as if they could, uh, they could answer uh, word for word with the with the soldiers of the English uh, company, um, the French the French were strong. The French were determined. Uh, the French were de defending their home country. But as Henry listened to uh, his soldiers talking as he wandered through the camp in the night, he realized that the English had one advantage. Uh, the French were a culmination of a variety of political and dynastic uh, factions who didn't necessarily see eye to eye. But all of his all of his company were made up of Englishmen with one basic uh, basic desire to get home safely. And if he could just call on that unity, if he could just uh, appeal to their sense of strength uh, and the common the common bond of their English heritage, he might just have a chance. And as as he emerged from his tent that morning of the battle, half armed and ready to go to battle, he overheard his cousin, the Earl of Westmoreland saying that he had gone to oversee the battlefield and the mighty French army outnumbered them perhaps as much as five to one. And he wished that they had just one 10,000 of the men in England who were doing no work today to fight for their cause. And Henry knew that that was his moment. And he answered him, what's he that wishes so? My cousin Westmoreland? Oh no, fair cousin. If we are marked to die, we are enough to do our country loss. And if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. Oh no, fair cousin, do not wish one man more. Rather proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. 
His passport shall be made, and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that shall live this day and come safe home will stand a tiptoe when this day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say tomorrow is St. Crispin. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say these wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names, familiar in their mouths as household words, Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This day shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me will be my brother, be he ne'er so vile, this day will gentle his condition, and gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed. They were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap, while then he speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. I said, holy moly, I want to get my stuff and go fight right now. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, uh, that's, that's usually when the helmets go on and the swords come up and everybody charges forward. Uh, that's that's fantastic. Thank you, thank you, Your Grace, for coming in and and sharing this with us today. I would love to have you back on the show when we have more time and just kind of talk about what you're doing now and and how you're sharing your knowledge and your skills and stuff, uh, not within the SA, but but uh, the the you know, that SCA adjacent. Yeah, SCA adjacent. So, but um, that, that was amazing. Thank you so much for being here. And like I said, I thought it was highly appropriate being Petrero War and and all that with with your background and being the former Baron. And, and that was a great thing. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure to, pleasure to see both of you guys. Um, look forward to being in in your company uh, face to face soon. Great. Well, you have a great day, Your Grace, and say hello to Felina for us. Yes, please do. So, um, Bjorn, that was fantastic. Well, we're we're running close on time, so we have our last last guest for the day. We're going to bring Mistress Meliora on. So yes, we are. We'll speak about uh, accessing the Zoom, <laughs> the Zoom, yeah, accessing the Zoom platform for a court that's coming up in about eighteen minutes. So let's uh, send you away again and bring in Mistress Meliora. She'll be here in just a moment. Hello. Oh, and I have you. Oh gosh, that mute button is going to kill me. I can hear you <laughs> can now. You hear me? Okay, good. <laughs> You're right. um, so if you quickly go through how people can access the uh, online court information, uh, that would be appreciated. I will go away from it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Sorry, I'm a little verklempt after that amazing performance. That speech gets every time. Um, so today our court at four o'clock, uh, like our last court, will be held via Zoom. The Zoom invite is on the event page uh, and that is also accessible on the Kingdom Facebook group. We do have a password for this meeting which you can find there. Uh, we also have a meeting ID. Now if you go and click on the link you will be able to join the call. You will not be able to join the call before four o'clock, before the host starts the call. If you are not familiar with Zoom, I'm sure a lot of people are doing Zoom um, and have done it so far, you can go to zoom.us and look at some quick tutorial videos on the top right hand corner. They have a button that says resources and you can click on that and find all kinds of things about using Zoom. For court, because we have such a large number of participants, everyone will be muted, uh, besides those who are speaking, obviously. And the chat function will be to host only at this time. 
and look at them. because we just want to make sure that uh, we aren't getting people joining the call to Zoom bomb us, which has been happening lately. So we are taking all precautions to avoid that. Uh, screen sharing will not be allowed. And uh, so we appreciate your patience with that. And we just look forward to seeing everyone on camera. Just know that even though you are muted, you will be visible at all times. So be careful <laughs> what's going on in the background while you are on camera. And um, you can join the call without your video. So you can just be a part of the call and be listening and all that will be visible is your name. Um, the best view, in my opinion, is to go up to the top right hand corner and click on gallery view so you can see everyone. Now during court, we're going to be spotlighting everyone who's going to be speaking. So you will be able to see who's speaking and all of that, but before and after, you can look through and see everyone. Please remember, if you would, to rename yourself with your SCA name minus any titles. So if you hover over your video, three dots, little dots will appear in the right-hand corner. You click on that and there is an option that says rename. Click on that, type in your SCA name with no titles and um, hit enter and your name, your SCA name will appear on your video. It helps us be able to find people who are scheduled to speak and you can see each other and find each other. There at the bottom toolbar, there is a button that says participants. You can click on that and a list of all of the participants in the call will come up on the right hand side and you can find people and all of that. But if you have any questions, please, instant message me on Facebook or post to the Facebook group and we can answer them. But we look forward to seeing everyone in just 15 minutes. I unmuted. Uh, Yay. Well, thank you. Yay, I'm learning. Uh, thank you very much for coming in and sharing that information. I know you need to get over there and start getting things ready. So uh, thank you for the guidance and we'll see you over in court in uh, less than 15 minutes. See you in a few. Thank you, Your Excellency. So let's uh, bring back Bjorn. Hey, Bjorn. So uh, I have a whole lot of content today. One last thing I want to wrap up before we uh, we sign off and everyone starts heading over to the Zoom platform. Um, let's talk about who we have coming in June. I'm not sure you know everyone that I have lined up. So uh, I'll share the, oh, and you know what? I unmuted me, but I didn't unmute you. Let's try that again. So. Um, so coming up, and I just kind of highlighted, we've reached out, and um, uh, Duke Guy is going to come on, come on the show, he talk, give us a little tour of his castle, uh, talk about the early days of the kingdom, and he's actually going to be also our bardic guest that night. Yes, pulling double duty as as uh, Duke Guy often does in so many ways. <laughs> uh, we've also reached out and confirmed that the uh, the editor of Turn Tournaments Illuminated. Master Riordan is going to be here to talk about uh, that publication and and what's all involved in that society level publication. And then um, what I think is going to be a great opportunity for us to find out some interkingdom anthropology and really just kind of bond with what's going on. Uh, Her Majesty of the East is going to be a guest on the show and talk about the challenges they've faced in their kingdom, how they've uh, kind of rallied the troops and really what their experience is on the East Coast compared to uh, what we've faced and, and how we've kind of went head on here on the West Coast. Uh, she has graciously agreed to appear on our show. So I think that'll be a, a fascinating uh, evening, just having that conversation with her. Absolutely. And uh, uh, True Thomas will come and perform. And again, uh, and again, if uh, you would like to share your bardic skills with the show and with the kingdom, uh, please drop us a line at livefromkaid at gmail.com. Looking at the clock, I think we all need to head over to Zoom and get ready for court. Uh, I want to thank everyone that was on the show today. Bjorn? Yes, one thing before you guys go. You have about 12 minutes. Get a piece of paper and make one of these. All right? <laughs> Mine says huzzah. 
if we are truly going to be muted, if you're muted, but you want to show support and you feel like this is too much spirit fingers or jazz hands, you've got about 12 minutes. I'm sure you've got a Sharpie somewhere. Make your Hazan poster so you can show support for the people who have received awards today. Thank you again for watching today. Uh, hopefully you uh, were entertained and informed. We will not have a show tomorrow. We'll be back on June 1st. And uh, then I believe there's another June online course. So we'll have a pre-show then. Thank you, Bjorn, again. And uh, thank you, everyone else, for watching. We'll see you over Thanks, in the corner. I'll see you there, buddy. Bye-bye.